Well, happy Thursday, everybody. So thankful you've joined me for this devotion. We are continuing our journey through the history of the early kings of Israel and then the divided country of the northern kingdom of Israel or Samaria and the southern kingdom known as Judah, occasionally referred to as, as uh, Israel as well. And we're looking today at the story of a king named Uzziah. That's how he's referred to in the book of 2 Chronicles, where I want you to open your Bible, please. 2 Chronicles 26. We also read about him in the book of 2 Kings in chapter 15, and there he's called uh, Azariah. So Azariah or Uzziah. He, he had both names, which was not unusual. Uh, you know, kings in England, I don't know, they got four or five names to their name. Um, so it wasn't unusual. Uh, there are several of the kings that had multiple names. So Azariah in the book of 2 Kings, but Uzziah in the book of 2 Chronicles and also in the prophet Isaiah's writing. And as I was reading his story, what I wrote at the top of my journal that spoke to me is the danger of pride. The danger of pride. Because Uzziah or Azariah, was a good king. He was a godly king. Uh, in, in 2 Chronicles 26, verses 4 and 5, we read that he did right in the sight of the Lord according to all that his father Amaziah had done. And he continued to seek God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding through the vision of God, so, so a prophet. And as long as he sought the Lord, God prospered him. So Uzziah was a good king, a godly king, who sought the Lord, wanted a relationship with the Lord, wanted to obey the Lord, and, and as long as he was doing that, God blessed him and the country. And uh, as you read his story, some of the blessings was military success and security, um, extended periods of peace where other countries never a attacked them and made, made war with them. Um, he... Um, he, 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 he grew the kingdom, their, their borders enlarged. So it was a time of prosperity and a time of blessing, you could say, uh, for the, the nation. But over time, all of that success caused him to, to not turn away from God. He, he never did that. He never worshiped idols. But as he got older, because of all his success, all the blessings of God, um, that if you take the spiritual side out of it, you take God out of it, you could look at it. He was very effective and successful. Well, he never abandoned God, but, but toward the end, he became less reliant on God. And he was less intentional about seeking God as he got, as he got older. And so you, uh, you drop down in chapter 26 of Second Chronicles to verse 16, says when he became strong, so after all these years of success, his heart, his heart was so proud that he acted corruptly and he was unfaithful to the Lord his God for he entered the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense. So what, what happened was, you know, God in scripture and in history had set up a very clear line of demarcation between the king and the Levitical priesthood between, between uh, the government, if you will, and those who, who served in the temple, the, the religious leaders, the worship leaders. Um, and, and, and Uzziah violates that. He's the king. Only the priest, the descendants of Aaron, are supposed to go inside the temple, burn incense, and offer sacrifice to God. But... As he became so proud of his leadership and, and, you know, God was with him and it blessed him, one day, for whatever reason, he went inside the temple and started offering incense. Um, and the priest confronted him, tried to get him to, to leave the temple and, and, and stop doing that. But he, he gets angry at the priest for confronting him. And as he's arguing with the priest in anger and pride, God strikes Uzziah, the king, on his forehead with leprosy, and the, the priests see it happen. And so you drop down in chapter 26 to verse 19. But Uzziah, with a censer in his hand for burning incense, was enraged, mad at the priest for telling him to get out of the temple. 
And while he was enraged with the priest, the leprosy broke out on his forehead before the priest in the house of the Lord. So inside the temple, beside the altar of incense. And Azariah, the chief priest, so the high priest, if you will, and all the priests looked at him and behold, he was leprous on his forehead. So they all saw it and they rushed him out. Then in verse 21, King Uzziah was a leper to the day of his death. Uh, the leprosy never left him. And as a result of that, he lived in a separate house in verse 21, being a leper for he was cut off from the house of the Lord. He couldn't go to the temple anymore. He had to live in his own quarters because remember in ancient times, they separated lepers into colonies. Well, as the king, he was separated into a house where he alone lived. Verse 21 also says, and Jotham, his son, was over the king's house judging the people of the land. So for about 10 years, Uzziah and his son Jotham were, were uh, co-regents. They ruled together. Yes, he was the king, but Jotham, the boy, the son, was the one who actually was the acting king, so to speak. So they were co-regents for about 10 years. Now, so he, he, he never did like Jeroboam or Rehoboam. He never worshiped pagan gods. He never abandoned God, turned his back on God. But his pride at, at all the blessings God had given him caused him to, to think too highly of himself. And, and, and I guess you could say he probably in his mind, it doesn't tell us this, but just his actions indicate that he, he probably took too much credit for himself and gave too little credit to God. And, and those boundaries became blurred in his line so that he goes into the temple to offer incense to, as an offering. But God had made it clear only the priests were to do that. The king could never do that. And so he sinned and God punished him, disciplined him as a result. Pride. Um, a few years ago, I read a book, and uh, some of you, especially who are in leadership or business, uh, probably read Jim Collins' best-selling book, Good to Great. The book of his I like best is actually the sequel called How the Mighty Fall, in which he looked at companies, corporations that have been great, and then transitioned and, and, and were no longer great. And he looked at what, what are the causes? It was, a, it was a major research project. What were the causes? And one of the causes of companies that are great, diminishing, ceasing to be great, is what he calls hubris born of success. In other words, a business, an industry, a company can become so confident because they've been successful, they've been effective, they've always owned their, the, the majority of the market share, Every, everything they've touched has turned to gold, and they begin thinking that everything they do will be successful, which isn't necessarily the case. And the hubris, the pride uh, that's born out of success leads them to make really bad decisions. And as a result, they, are, they cease being great. Um, all kinds of examples of that in American Industry That can be true uh, of a church, can be true of a leader, can be true of an individual. I think that was true of Uzziah or Azariah, that there was a hubris born of success. And what's interesting is his success was, was because of God's blessings. Do you know that sometimes the things that God blesses us with can be the very things that we allow to distract us from continuing to seek him? That, that if we allow our attitude and our heart to, to, to get twisted somehow, God's blessings, we turn into a curse against our very spiritual lives. Something we all need to uh, guard against. You see, humility and ongoing dependence on God, ongoing seeking of God is a constant effort. And I would say that the more successful we are, the more blessed we are. And I would also add that the older we get, the more intentional we must be about seeking God, having the humility to say, I need Jesus. I need the word. I need to seek God <clears throat> because 
age, longevity, success, and blessings can breed a subtle pride that ends up causing us to depend on God less and seek God less. It's just a word of caution. Um, the older you get, the more successful you get, the more humility you need to stay on your face seeking God in His Word and don't think you have arrived because you didn't get there without God and you won't stay there without God. That's the word for today. I'll see you tomorrow.